What do you do when you're on the dance floor? Do you shuffle? Two-step? Nod your head? In the early days of house music, dancers took their craft just as seriously as the DJs. Clubs had spacious dance floors where people could move in a free, athletic fashion. Large battle circles would form. Dancers would cover the floor in baby powder to reduce the friction on their feet. But these days, you mostly see people shifting from one foot to another all night. So, what happened? Why don't people dance like they used to? In New York, David Mancuso's loft parties were a melting pot for the boldest, most innovative moves of the 1970s. The loft is the mother of the clubs around the world when it comes to dance music. It was that scene that created the clubbing we know today. These private members-only events were founded on an ethos of self-expression and a non-judgmental attitude. New York was a different era of everything, you know, in that time. Frankie Knuckles was from the Bronx, and Tony Humphreys was from New Jersey. They grew up around Larry LeVan, who was in New York. And the dance scene in general came from disco and came from jazz. In Chicago during the 1980s, the blossoming house music scene gave birth to a new dance style. It involved frenzied full body movements inspired by the drum heavy jack tracks that were emerging. House music filtered into New York clubs like the Paradise Garage, where dancers paired freeform moves with elegant Latin steps like the Boogaloo and the Hustle. Breakdancing stormed the scene as the 80s rolled on giving rise to a style that could only come from New York's cosmopolitan array of cultures. The mix that emerged was house dancing, a freeform style that privileges self-expression as much as formal technique. There are a few steps that everybody kind of does. After you have those basic steps, it's just like martial arts. You learn those basic steps, and then you find yourself in that. You have the beat, and then you have the communication that goes on in the middle with everyone else. Well, I think the uniqueness in what we do is a combination of everything being placed into the dance in particular, the way you connect all these different rhythms and body mechanic motions and just the feeling in general is special. When we talk about house dance and people considering us house dancers, they didn't call us that back in the day. We were club heads who went to clubs and what we were doing was we were clubbing right. when we danced the music. By the mid-90s, dance music in New York had split into two major factions. On one side, there was the European-influenced rave scene with its huge warehouse parties and high-intensity music. On the other was the house scene, which had clubs like the Red Zone, the Sound Factory, and Shelter. Soundtracked by DJs like Carrie Chandler and Louis Vega, at these clubs, house dancing solidified as a style in its own right one that fused new street dances with older traditions like jazz and tap. There were no cameras allowed in there, but I was a dancer every week there. Like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was at the Sound Factory. <laughs> House music was my love, but I was this, you know, street jazz girl who danced everywhere. I would go out during the weeks to Quicks. I would go to Nell's. I would go to all these different places. Each place had its own experience, even though we played house music there. They would play other things there. They'd have live music. So you would actually dance to live music, too. It wasn't just house music all night or hip hop all night. New York nightlife in the 90s was famously fueled by heavy drug use, but the athletic nature of house dancing required relative sobriety. Many dancers came strictly to battle, not to socialize. And even after years of dancing together, knew little more than each other's first names.
clubs were reluctant to book these promoters because their crowds didn't spend much money at the bar. In early house dancing, it's not about alcohol or getting drugged up. It's athletic, it's about spirituality. Dancers also require space and lots of it. As New York rapidly gentrified in the later 20th century, rooms quickly got smaller and more expensive, leaving house heads with fewer places to congregate. When Mayor Giuliani was elected in 1997, he ran on a campaign to clean up the city, then led a nightclub crackdown that closed many of the key venues. Well, here we are. It's a sad day in uh, the underground nightclub history of New York. We have a club being torn down and stripped in like 72 hours here. While this process was playing out in American cities, house music was already a massive moneymaker in Europe, leaving many of the scene's black and Latin pioneers out of the loop. House music and its dance moved to the margins of popular culture. There is a house dance community still vibing, but it's so separated from like, let's say the techno scene. Somebody would think house dancing died. You might not see people sprinkling baby powder at the club, but the movement is actually bigger and more global than ever. There are urban dance tournaments in Russia, Holland, France, and Japan, and people travel thousands of miles to learn and compete. House dancing has become one of the main categories for meetups like these, alongside voguing, hip hop, and whacking. It's actually bigger today than it was in the 90s, because in the 90s, it was like a New York thing. Now they actually have businesses formed around it. And a lot of the dancers travel around the world and do different events all over the place, you know? New York also has parties like Funk Box, Soul Summit, and Body and Soul, where old school heads and millennial club kids carry the torch for hardcore house dancing. The loft parties continue to this day, and there are loft-inspired events around the world that carry its non-judgmental ethos. It's like one or two clubs now that cater to that, and we kind of really go out just to release. Serious dancers bring an energy that's infectious, and it's because they're 100% locked into the music. House dancing allows people to show off their individual skill, but it's also about coming together. If house dancing can teach us anything, it's that self-expression needs a community to thrive. 